For fx to be continuous at x is equal to 0, the value of fx at x is equal to 0, the limit of fx from the right hand side at x is equal to 0, and the limit of fx from the left hand side at x is equal to 0 should all be equal. Let's call this condition 1. The value of the function fx at x is equal to 0 is equal to c given in the problem statement. Let's call this equation 2. The left hand limit of fx at x is equal to 0 can be written as limit h tending to 0 sine of a plus 1 h plus sine h upon h. This can be broken into two components. The first component is limit h tending to 0 sine of a plus 1 h divided by h and the second component is limit h tending to 0 sin h upon h. Multiply and divide by a plus 1 in the first term and note that sin of a plus 1 h upon a plus 1 h tends to 1 as h tends to 0 and in the second term sin h upon h also tends to 1 as h tends to 0. Therefore, the left hand limit of fx at x is equal to 0 is equal to a plus 1 plus 1 which is equal to a plus 2. Let's call this equation 3. Now the right hand limit of fx at x is equal to 0 is equal to the limit h tending to 0 root of 1 plus bh minus 1 divided by bh. Now multiply and divide by the conjugate of the numerator which is root of 1 plus bh plus 1 and therefore this is equal to limit h tending to 0 1 plus bh minus 1 in the numerator and in the denominator bh times in brackets root of 1 plus bh plus 1. This simplifies to the limit h tending to 0 1 upon 1 plus root of 1 plus bh and the value of this limit is equal to half. Therefore, the right hand limit of fx at x is equal to 0 is equal to half. Let's call this result 4. Now, using results 2, 3 and 4 in 1, we get c is equal to a plus 2 is equal to half. Therefore, to summarize, c is equal to half and a is equal to half minus 2 or minus 3 upon 2 and b is any real number which is the required answer.